hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. On every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On a third, come on, y'all. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of God. Praise God. Good to see our visitors with us tonight. We're so happy to see you come out to worship the Lord Jesus Christ with us tonight. Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing to be on uh, each and every one tonight. There's, there's so many sick. Let's pray for the... The ladies that are in the hospital, Miss Vicki Horton, keep praying for her. Still in the rehabilitation hospital there. Also keep praying for Lisa Haddix at Mary Black. And uh, also keep praying for Miss Helen Hyder. That's uh, Sister Jamie's aunt. Is she still in the same place? Is she? Well, praise God. She had a, had a series of light strokes. Is that what it was? And... Amen. Let's just pray for that family at God. Work there and have his sweet will and way. And then let's pray for the Gosnell family. And, uh, and it's good to see uh, Joe and Karen with us tonight. And it's Karen's dear daddy, Mr. Gosnell, uh, that went to be with Jesus this past week. And we had a memorial service here yesterday for him. And boy, what a wonderful time we had. Amen. And uh, I think when somebody's saved, that's the way it can be. You can send them off. Hallelujah. Praise God with a shout. Rejoice. The uh, Bible says, weeping endureth for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah, when they leave us, it leaves a void place, it leaves an emptiness there. But praise God, not one that Jesus Christ can't fill and help you with. That's something the unsaved know nothing about. But the saved by grace, praise God. We've got hope, praise God. We've got that blessed hope, praise God, down in our heart. Hallelujah, we know in our heart for sure everything's going to be all right. Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing to be on the service. And Brother Stephen Williams, you pray with us. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. Uh, Brother Leon, what we got going here tonight? Sister Skyler. Well, they're getting ready to do a puppet show. Y'all was looking. Yeah, come sing for us. Hey. Well, bring the little kids on. That'd be good. Come on.
at hiding the pain in your life. You've hid on the sorrow that haunts you each night. But if there is something that you need to share, I want you to know someone cares. You don't Seems unfair and so hard to stand You reach out for someone just to hold to your hand Remember the words of our Savior are true His promise I will never Stand and find your place. 36. 36. Shelter in the time of storm. 36. First, second, and the last. 36. <clears throat> y'all yeah, help me out. My voice a little, little rough here. Y'all sing out and help me out here. <clears throat> The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever He'll be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night. A shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus in a rock in a weary land. A weary
Amen. Amen. Don't forget the Mother's Day brunch, Saturday, May the 5th at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. You don't want to miss it. $7 a person. It'll be games, skits, door prizes. Uh, Darlene will be giving money away, it says. Oh, it says give money to Darlene. Man. Too bad. Huh? Wednesday night after church, games, snacks, and a devotion for all kids. Amen. It looked like AU kids. I was trying to know, what are AU kids? <laughs> Bring a change of clothes. Amen. Y'all are going to be playing rough. That's all I'd say. No supper Wednesday night. I just noticed some of y'all was uh, uh, getting a little tubby, so I thought I'd uh, lay off on you a little bit. You know, uh, I'm just trying to look out for you. Amen. We can't all be slim. I, I, I tell you, skinny people, I don't know what we're going to do with them. We uh, was eating back there yesterday, uh, uh, and uh, I was watching uh, some of them eating. I mean, skinny as a bean pole. And Diane had the biggest plate of food I've ever seen in my life. I thought, now how in the world can she, is she clean the plate too, buddy? I watched, I, I, was, I know she ain't going to eat all that. And she cleaned that plate off. <laughs> now, she probably got some dessert, too. Now, that's wicked, man. That's, anybody can, can uh, eat like that and stay skinny. I just don't understand it. You, that's, just, that's just one of them things we're just going to just gonna have to live with. Some of us are under the fat curse. Ain't nothing we do about it, amen. And Stephen there. And he eats like a horse too, don't he? Unreal, man, unreal. But uh, praise God, he no use. But we are going to lighten up here for a week or two and to back off. Uh, Randy said, "Ain't no way you can go on a diet and go to this church." <laughs> this is eating this bunch of people I've ever seen in my life. But we are. We're going to try to. We're going to try to lighten up a little bit. Amen. Lighten up. But we enjoy it. Amen. Praise God. We enjoy it. Back before we got saved, you crowds and live wicked and run around and everything. Praise God, you got saved, you go to church and eat. <laughs> Praise God. I tell you, it's a great life. Well, everything tastes better after you get saved, don't it? Amen. It really does. That's right. Praise God. It's life sour till you get saved. Jesus sweetens it up. Amen. Your food even tastes better after you get saved. Amen. And what about that? You say you're crazy. Well, I don't know. Look at me. And I've gained all this since I've been saved. <laughs> Amen. If you've got your Bible, look with me in 1 John tonight. 1 John. 1 John, chapter number 5, and verse number 16. I want to preach tonight a little while on when it's too late to pray. When it's too late to pray. You better pray while you can. You better pray while you can get in touch with God. You better pray while you have access to the throne of grace. There is a time when it's too late to pray. There may be a time when you want to pray and you can't pray through. You can't pray through? Yeah, is that scripture? Oh yeah, it sure is. Now I'm not talking about a lost person trying to pray through to, to, to get saved. I ain't talking about that. He'll just repent of his sins, confess Christ. He's born into the family of God. Ain't no praying through for that. That's a bunch of junk. Uh, there's nothing more ridiculous than see somebody on the altar and some poor old sinner weeping and somebody beside them said, pray through now, pray through. You can pray through. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. You just open the Word of God and show them the precious, exceeding precious promises of God. If they're willing to repent of their sins and sincerely ask Jesus to come into their life, he's waiting, pray, he's eager. The Lord's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I've already read it in the book, Amen. Don't have to pray through for that, no sir. But I'll tell you one thing. After you get saved by the grace of God, there's some things you have to pray through. There's some, boy, I'll tell you what, that, that, that prayer life's a battlefield. It really is. The devil don't want you praying. He sure don't. He'll give you every other thing in the world to do to keep you from praying. 
He'll, he'll work on your mind. He'll work on your family. Praise God, the telephone will ring. Somebody will knock at the door. Uh, you'll try to get off somewhere by yourself, and there'll be something that'll uh, try to keep you from praying. But you better pray while you can, I'm telling you. Because there can come a time when it's too late to pray. Too late to pray. First John 5. First John 5 and verse number 16. Listen to this now. If a man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing to be on the reading of the word of God. Brother Carlos, you pray for us. Amen. Praise God. You know, I, I think about this. The sin unto death. The sin unto death is a sin that can be uh, committed by a saved man. You see, this is not talking about an unsaved man. No, sir, it's not talking about somebody that doesn't know God. This is talking about somebody that's truly been born again that can commit this sin unto death. A sin unto death. A sin that God has dealt with them over and over again and they fail to get it right. And if God finally comes to the place where he says, that's it. They ain't no, you, you cross over that deadline. You go too far with God and there's no use to pray about it because you're good as a dead man. Is that right, Brother Norris? That's what the book says, amen? The Bible says there's a sin unto death. You say, how far is it? What is that sin? I believe it could be different things, maybe in a different life of an individual. Uh, I believe it could be a lot of different, th hey, I, I, don't, I don't know what it might be. But I'll tell you what, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. Satan just, just doesn't uh, pound on you with the big things. He starts out with the little things. And you start to let this little thing go and you let something else go. And it, uh, there's a, multi a multiplication of sin. And that's the way the devil works. He starts to pile it up on you, man. And before long, you're so laden down, you don't know which way to turn. And you get to the place where you feel like you can't even pray. And you think you can't never get back to God. And there is a, a danger of you going too far, going too far, and God saying, that's it. You've sinned the sin unto death. I'm taking you out. I'm taking you home. Uh, that's what the Word of God uh, teaches. Amen. Uh, I believe that, I believe first thing God will do when a, a Christian gets sin in their life, I believe that God will convict that individual. And I believe that he'll, God will give them a space of repentance. Sure. Amen. Amen. We have a gracious God tonight. Right. I mean, he's a gracious God. He's a loving God. And uh, I, I believe God gives us a space to judge ourselves. Amen. 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 Now, I, I remember when his kids, my dad said, y'all better straighten up now. And he'd speak a word of warning. Now, if we didn't heed the warning, we knew what was coming next. The same thing is true with God. The Holy Spirit will speak to your heart, and he'll, he'll deal with you about something, and, and uh, he'll give you a space to judge yourselves. The Bible says if we'll judge ourselves. Right. Amen? Right. If we'll if God, God, God wants us to judge ourselves, to search our heart, to confess it and get it right. But if we fail to judge ourselves, praise God, when he convicts us and deals with us, then God has to chasten us, as we were talking about this morning. And he does chastise his children when they get out of line. Not because he enjoys bringing some, something in your life. Sometimes he lets your own sins do that to you. He really will. But God will chastise his, his children. And God, God will deal with them as a father deals with his children. And if that doesn't work, he'll coffin them. Three big C's. You ought to write that down in your Bible. Amen. Praise God. The first thing he'll do, he'll convict. And he'll give you a space there. Then he'll chastise you. And then if that doesn't work, he'll coffin you. There was an old boy over there in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And this, this guy, uh, I, I believe he was a saved man. Now a saved man is capable of committing any sin that an unsaved man commits except one. And that's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. It's absolutely impossible for a saved man to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. He can't do it. He lives inside of him. Praise God. He's a partaker of him. Praise God. And he's not going to do that. That's a sin that can never be forgiven in this life or the life to come. Is what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Uh, the Word of God tells us that there is a sin unto death. Sin unto death. 
And when a man has committed that sin or a woman has committed that sin, there's no use for them to pray because it's too late to pray. Ain't nothing to pray about. Now, uh, have you ever uh, got down trying to pray for someone and you just felt like you just couldn't get any leadway? Couldn't get any liberty at all to get through and you just, you just couldn't, couldn't have any peace praying. You would try to pray and couldn't pray. I've, I've had that situation before. I've, I've got down and I've prayed, but I felt like, man, my prayers wasn't going nowhere. As far as I knew, everything was right in my heart and there wasn't nothing, uh, but I, it was just like God said, hey, I'm taking them home. I'm taking them out. As I was talking this morning, I've knelt by the bedside of many people like that. And, uh, and it's just like God said, I'm taking them home. I'm taking them out. They've gone too far. They played around with this world too long. It wouldn't get their heart right. I'm taking them on home. And that's what the Word of God teaches that He'll do too. He really will. The, the Word of God says there is a sin unto death. That's what He said. Look at that verse, man. The Bible says, if a man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. But he says there is a sin unto death. Uh, if a man, there's something wrong and you pray, uh, hey, they may be restoration, they may be healing, they may be, God may raise them up. But if they sin the sin unto death, he's not going to, he's taking them out. It's what he said. But there's a time when it's too late to pray. You say, when is it too late to pray, preacher? It'll be too late to pray after the rapture. You may be here lost without God. I think everybody's got a testimony that they're saved by the grace of God, but these tapes go all over the place. Man, they go all over the country. They go everywhere. These CDs and tapes and videos, they go out all over the place, and only God knows where they'll end up. Amen? So there may be somebody watching the video. There may be someone listening to the CD or the cassette tape and uh, uh, if you are and you're lost without God, then after the rapture of the church, it's too late to pray. You better pray while you've got an opportunity. You better cry out while God is uh, dealing with your heart for a person that has heard the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this dispensation of the grace of God and the rapture takes place and they're left behind, it'll be too late for them. Now for somebody that's never had a clear presentation of the gospel of Christ, there'll be many saved during the tribulation period. I believe that. I believe they'll be from every nation, kindred, tongue, and people that the Bible says that'll be saved, that'll be converted under the preaching of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists that'll be uh, saved, uh, that'll be converted uh, under the preaching of the two witnesses in the tribulation, right? And they'll go into all the world, and uh, their message will be the same message that John the Baptist had when he came on the scene. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And there'll be a multitude saved during the tribulation period. But for those who have heard the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and rejected the grace of God during this dispensation of time, they'll not be saved. You say, can you prove it, preacher? 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verses 11 and 12. Listen to this. Second Thessalonians chapter number 2. Verses 11 and 12, the, the church at Thessalonica had been troubled. There had been false teachers that had crept in and was spreading false doctrine and teaching even that the rapture had taken place and uh, they had been left behind over in the first book of Thessalonians. And Paul is still dealing even when he writes the second uh, letter to this church and, and uh, he's clearing up some things where there was some confusion there. And then uh, verses 11 and 12, Let's back up and read a little bit more, though, there. In verse number 3, verses 1 and 2 tells us that he's talking about the, the coming of the Lord and the second coming. In verse number 3 it says of chapter 2, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's talking about the Antichrist that's coming on the scene right after the rapture of the church. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? 
And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, that word letteth is the old English word for hinder. It simply means he, he that hindereth. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And the reason I read all that because I wanted you to see that I was in the proper context. The seat, I wanted you to see that I was where I was supposed to be and not just pulling a verse out of the air like so many do today. And it says in verse uh, uh, number 10, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. That's talking about people that won't receive the love of the truth and trust Jesus Christ right now. Now look here at verse number 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all, A-double-L, might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's talking about people right here in this time that hear the preaching of the word of God and spurn God's love and reject the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the rapture takes place. They will not be saved. And I don't care what Tom, Dick, and Harry comes along and tells you they will. The Bible says that they seal their doom the instant the trumpet sounds. Now I believe they are people that sit in churches and they got everything else on their mind, everything else on their heart, and they don't hear nothing the preacher says. But I'm talking about a person that has clearly understood and rejected the gospel of Christ. Are you with me? The Bible says that it's going to be too late for them to pray. Oh, there'll probably be many of them will cuss, and then they'll pray. And then they'll cry, and they'll cuss, and they'll pray, and they'll cry, and, and they'll, they won't know which way to turn or what to do until the Antichrist steps on the scene, and they'll say, he'll say, I'm God! And they'll fall down and worship him and they'll accept him. They wouldn't accept the true Christ. They wouldn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But when the false Christ, the man of sin, makes his manifestation after the rapture of church, they'll say, there Jesus Christ is. And he'll have an answer. There ain't no doubt about it. Uh, they'll have an answer for everything going and coming. Uh, they, I don't know, it may say UFOs is taking all the Christians away or, or it was something, it was some horrible plague and they've all vanished. Uh, they'll have every, everything in the world to say what happened to the Christians. They all departed and got together and they're hiding out in the commune somewhere. I mean, the devil will say, he'll have, all, he'll have, a, he'll have all kind of answers and the world will swallow it, hook, line, and a sinker, amen? No doubt about that. But I'm telling you, you better get saved now. You say, if the rapture took place, I'd get saved. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. After you heard the gospel and you've rejected Christ, you will not. But there may be someone that's listening to this tape or this CD and the rapture's taking place. These, these things will be around a while. Amen. Praise God. There may be someone that's got the tape or the CD or the video. Praise God, after we're gone and raptured away, hey, praise God, it's not too late for you. You could get saved. Praise God, cry out to God. Hallelujah. Give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. I hope somebody gets this CD after we're gone, don't you? I hope somebody gets the tape that's never heard a clear presentation and don't really know what salvation's all about after we're taken out, praise God, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Praise God. But for those who have heard the truth, praise God, it's too late to pray. After you've sinned the sin unto death, after you've crossed God's deadline, after you've gone too far, it's too late to pray, I'm telling you, my friend. It's too late to pray after, after the rapture of the church has come and taken the Christians away and you've heard the gospel of Christ. You better get saved now. You better give your heart to Jesus. The Bible says that the old devil's going to, hey, there's going to be, there's, you're going to believe the strong delusions of the Antichrist. You're going to believe the lie of the devil. And you're going to take that mark in your right hand or your forehead. You say, I'd never do it. Yeah, you will too. If you won't trust Christ now, you'll receive the Antichrist after the, after the true Christ comes for his church. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 3, he said, but my spirit shall not always strive with man. 
My spirit shall not always, there's going to come a time when he says that's it. I believe that. I, I really do believe that. Proverbs chapter 1, listen to this. This is talking about wisdom crying out. And how foolish it is for uh, people to spurn God's love and reject God's love. But in the Proverbs, very first proverb, praise God, you get wisdom from Proverbs. Did you know that? You want to be wise, read the book of Proverbs. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. They'll make you wise, amen? Those pro Proverbs will give you wisdom if you'll read them and you'll apply them to your life. But in the Proverbs... Proverbs 1 and verse 24. Listen to this. Listen now. This is wisdom talking to the foolish. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not, all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they, shall, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and shall be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto the me shall dwell safely and shall be acquit from fear of evil. Do you hear that? Praise God. You better listen to wisdom. You better listen to God. And God is all wisdom. Amen. Praise God. There's a time when it's too late to pray. It's, it's what that's teaching us. You can go too far with God and trifle on the love and mercy of God and play games with God till God says, that's it. Amen. Amen. That's it. I hear people say, well, I just get saved anytime I want to. That's the most ridiculous thing anybody's ever said. Uh, I heard people say things, well, like if I was in an accident and I was laying out on the highway and my blood was running out, I'd call out and ask God to save me. Yeah, from the awful shape you was in. Not from your sins. Not true repentance. No, sir, it don't work that way. I'll give you a very good example. When I was about 16 years old, I was with some old boys. Praise God, this old boy was playing with a gun. The gun went off, and uh, we, we was drinking and in sin in our life. And I'm not trying to glorify sin. I'm just making a point tonight. I hate, hate sin. I hate, hate all my past life. But if it helps somebody, I'll, I'll talk about it. But in, anyway, uh, the gun went off, and uh, man, I got my whole side sprayed full of pellets, and they rushed me to the hospital, and I was laying there, and I thought for sure, man, I looked down, and there was about 25 little holes in my side, and there was blood oozing out of every one of them. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And my mama was there, she'd come in, man, she was crying, and everybody was upset, they thought for sure, man, I was going to die there, and I said, I need a preacher. I said, get me a preacher, please get me a preacher. And, but I, I never did get a preacher that night, nobody come. Next thing I know, they give me something, and they knocked me out, and found out I was done some x-rays, and I was all right. And they kept me in the hospital overnight, but the next morning when I woke up, and I found out that I wasn't dying. You know what? I didn't care much about having a preacher no more. Well, I think I'll be all right now. That's about what I think of deathbed religion. Amen? I'm not saying that somebody, somebody can't get, get saved, lay it out there if they've truly repented. I know a preacher friend of mine, Brother Ken Cox. And uh, he was jumping out of an airplane. Now, this is a true story. Old preacher Ken, he jumped out of that airplane, and he was coming down, and the parachute didn't open. And you know what? He cried and he prayed as he was falling in midair, and he begged God. He says, God, please forgive my sins, and please save me. Praise God. And he, then the parachute opened. Praise God. And when he got to the ground, you know what? He started living for Jesus. He truly got saved in midair. Praise God. Now that's a miraculous story. Amen. You say you believe it? Yeah, I believe it. Praise God. Praise God because it transformed his life. It changed his life. He was a new creature. He was a new person. Amen. 
But I wouldn't bank on jumping out of a plane and getting saved in midair coming down. Amen? I wouldn't put a whole lot of confidence in that if I was you. Praise God, I'd come when God was dealing with me, when God was speaking to my heart. Praise God. I wouldn't say, hey, I'm going to wait until the last minute. Hey, you might wait too late. You wait till the Holy Spirit quits dealing with you. You're not going to get saved anyway. By the way, it's the Holy Spirit that draws you and gives you that desire to come. Now, I believe a person can get saved as long as there's a genuine desire in their heart to be saved. And uh, I, I believe that with all my heart. But there has to be a genuine desire in your heart to turn from that sin. You've got to be sick and tired of that old life, sick and tired of that sin, and turn to God. Praise God. Old Brother Ken, man, I don't know what had been happening in his life. I'm sure God had been dealing with him. Something must have been going on in his life before that. Praise God. But he got saved that day. And I'll tell you what, God will save you today if you'll let him, if you'll invite him into your life.